In the speeches over the past 10 years or so that I've heard Sidney give, more than anything else, he's um, retold a story that's in the book in a chapter called The Sky Washing Out. It's uh, the one where he gets lost chasing down a martin that he was uh, in unfamiliar territory setting up a new trap line and he, uh, he gets turned around and it gets dark and it's extremely cold. He's got to make camp for the night out there with nothing but an axe. And he gets a fire going and he, and he catches himself dozing off, falling into the fire. And at that point, he remembers the words of the late Edwin Simon, who told Sidney how to survive in that condition, in that situation. You build two fires. You let one burn out, and then you put green spruce boughs over that, and you sleep on the coals, and you get a couple hours sleep, while the other one's still burning, keeping you warm, and you wake up when you get cold. And Sidney remembered that story, and he followed the advice to the letter, and it worked exactly as promised, and he survived. And the lesson for us, I think, why Grandpa Sidney talked about that story so much in his later days, I think the lesson for us is that you got to tell the truth. It's a hard lesson to adhere to, but it's a simple one. Tell the truth. It may save someone else's life, just as listening to the truth may save yours. And be prepared, not just with the right tools to do the job, but with knowledge. Our duty to educate children, Sidney believed, is all about preparing them for the world they're growing into. If they are not prepared for the challenges they face, he often said, that is our fault, not theirs. Don't just expect that someone will come along to help or somehow it's all gonna work out fine in the end. When problems get solved more often than not because people like Sidney Huntington go out, go to work and fix them. And now here again, Sidney's in my mind, giving me the dope slap and telling me to take him off that pedestal again. There but by the grace of God go I. He might be yelling at me right now. And Sidney was indeed a blessed man. Given how many times he almost died and pulled through, whether it was in the hospital or on the trap line, I don't think anybody can conclude that he wasn't a blessed man. God was indeed looking out for him. He was loyal, as we've said many times tonight, and grateful for the Episcopal Church for raising him and his siblings after the death of their mother. He was blessed with a huge family. And I look out in, from my vantage point here and see his face in so many of your faces. Just as it, was, it is the job of adults in our community to make sure our kids are prepared for college or for careers, it's now our job, all of us, to be mindful of Sydney's legacy. And I'll use his words. Work hard. Get there early and stay late. Don't expect something for nothing. Help a child in need. Respect the resources of the land and the river. Be proud of who you are and where you come from. These are his words. These are his values. They're entrusted to us to carry on. Thank you.
has come and lay beside me. I've been waiting since you left. She is sweet to me. Well, I am the luckiest man alive. And did I tell you, baby? You are the joy of my life. First time that I saw you, oh, you took my breath away. When I get to heaven, I walk, walk with the angels that day. She takes me by the hand. Well, I am the luckiest man alive. And did I tell you, baby, you are the joy of my life? Some may have their riches, some may have their worth of fame. As long as I have a view, well, I'll treasure each and every day. And she is sweet to me, well, I am the luckiest man alive. And did I tell you, baby? Did I tell you, baby, you are the joy of my life?
prayers of the people, <coughs> Joyce and her son. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, who has knit together our elect and our communion and fellowship in this birth of body of sin in Christ the Lord, grant we beseech thee to the whole church and paradise and on earth, the light and the peace. Amen. Amen. Grant all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Amen. Grant to us, who are still on our journey, to walk as yet by faith, that thy Holy Spirit may lead us with holiness and righteousness, honor and Amen. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Amen. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the day ahead in the comfort of a reasonable and holy hope and the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Amen. Help us to pray in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the re resurrection of life everlasting. Amen. Grant us grace to entrust city to thy never failing love. Receive them into the arms of thy mercy, and remember them according to favor which thou bearest unto thy people. Grant that, increasing in knowledge and love of thee, he may go from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Let us pray also for the Fairbanks Four, whose fate is being decided this week. One of the Sydney's um, nephew. Also, let us pray for Sydney's brother-in-law, Jesse Weaver passed away exactly one week prior to city. Grant unto all who have died in the hope of the resurrection to have our consummation and bliss in thy eternal and everlasting glory, and with blessed me and all the same, to receive the crown of life which thou didst promise to all who share in the victory of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our next song is just a close to